Hi everyone, welcome, welcome to my little short introduction video to go with my mini ebook about discovering your inner goddess, your goddess archetypes. So I know some of you may prefer reading an ebook, but some of you probably prefer audio or visual. So I think this could be a really good way to help me to introduce you to my body of work, which is about goddess archetypes and the wisdom from the myths. So let's get started. Some of you may know that I've been talking about goddess, myths, and archetypes for a while. And I think, first of all, I want to say why I think it's so relevant and perhaps interesting and important to many of us, many of us women in today's world. One of the things I find is that when you understand your inner patterns, your personality, your interests, your inclination, and the way why you do certain things or make certain decisions, once you understand who you are inside better, it really helps you to also understand people around you, um, and that will help you with your relationship with them and with yourself. So often we, we just carry away with what we're doing, our goals and everything else. And we may not take the time to go within and to understand our inner pattern that are all sitting in our subconscious. So things that we, we just don't know that we may have certain tendency and by having a closer reflection about our inner patterns, that is sitting in our con subconscious that can make that can really help us to reflect on who we are and who we want to become so i find archetypes is a really good way to help us to get started with that and for me it's always about beginning a journey to really transform our life and the step one it's always about getting to know yourself who you are better so that is really what interests me and sort of attract me to to create this body of work which is talking about archetypes and I find there is a lot of wisdom in myths and it's sort of somehow gelled together so anyway let me just get started <laughs> so goddesses in myths I don't know whether you love myths, love legends, fairy tales, story but since I was a child I've always loved and interested in studying mythology because I think we can learn quite a lot from them. So essentially myths, when we look at some of these stories, we don't look at them as a scientific paper or a historical record. We look at them from a point of view where we see them as human projection of the fear, the desire, the hope they have. And and it doesn't matter when these myths were recorded from Japan or from, from um, in Asia or in Europe or Greece, you know, they all tell certain type of story that help us to understand what are our common fears, what are our common desire. Usually they are stories that carry a very important moral message and they really help us to understand our human nature and, and also, you know, what are the values, core value of the current society. And it doesn't matter whether it's like a myth mythology that was started 500 years ago, a thousand years ago. Um, you will see these themes are common and, and also in different parts of the world because human nature are very similar around the world, right? So I find them inspiring as well as serve as cautionary tales. So I think we learn a lot from myths. We can if we look at them in such a way. We don't look at them like, you know, some of the stories, especially in Greek mythology, that you think, wow, that can't happen, that cannot be real. Yeah, we don't look at them like science, scientific papers or history. We look at them really from a point of view, understanding the message that they carry on. So, and I picked goddess because I think as women, you can really relate some of the patterns and some of the, the um, fear, the pain, the worry that women carry. So for me it really works and it really resonate with me and many people that I work with and so I find goddess myths are really easy for us to get to know these archetypes. So what are goddess archetypes? So essentially as I sort of briefly mentioned before they are our inner patterns. They t it's, it's like our personality, our character and even experience. As we go through six of the major Greek 
goddess archetypes, you will know what I mean by experience as well. And they are universal. They are in our collective subconscious. So if I talk about Athena as um, as a symbol, like she's the goddess of wisdom, as a symbol of um, someone who's really wise, who's really rational, who's really smart, we, we can really relate and we can understand that if I talk about Athena, it doesn't matter where you are Chinese or you come from a Latin American, America, you have a you have an understanding of what I mean by Athena because it really describes a certain characteristics of a type of woman. So you will understand that pattern that I'm referring to. And because they all sit in our collective subconscious. So and these patterns are universal. So you know you will come across what I say when I give you examples, what I mean by um the universal. So in any case, I find I'm really excite, interesting and exciting to see and to discover for myself my own inner patterns. And I also find goddess, it's, um, it's a symbol, it's, it's an image of a mystical feminine archetype. And that exists in all of us because when you're women, your predominant energy is feminine. Um, and we certainly have masculine energy when we go about the day, when we do certain things, it will be more rational, will be more the doing instead of the being, which is more feminine. The receiving is more feminine. So we have both energy, but predominantly as women, physically and inside of us, we have feminine power. We're feminine. So, and I think goddess myths and goddess is a perfect image that uh, embody the energy and the image. So I find that's why I find the myths really anchor in, in our psyche. So goddess wisdom is also ageless because it doesn't matter, as I said, whether you read this myth um, 20 years ago or now, it is still applicable. Like the love, the bond between a mother and a daughter you know, the myth for the Amata and Persephone, that's ageless. It doesn't matter when and where you read it from, you understand it when I talk about the bond between a mother and a daughter. And it's relatable and it's very applicable because when we understand its archetypes, we can really apply in our daily life. Look at why we behave in a certain way, why we make certain decisions, and the way how we relate to one another. So... I'll give an example as we go, but I'm trying to keep this short because it's supposed to be a short introduction. Um, anyway, so let's get started with our six Greek goddesses. The first one I'm going to talk about is Athena. So as you know, she's the goddess of wisdom and craft. You probably will read a little bit more to do with myths in the ebook than these videos, but I want to give you an idea about who they are and what kind of archetypes are they. So she's a strategist, she's very rational, she's very focused, and she's driven. In her myths, you will see the story about her, how she helped the Greek heroes. Um, basically, she really helped to um, the Greek to win the Trojan War, for instance, and how she really helped the people that she believed in. She's very wise, um, she's also... Um, very patient, and she can see the big picture, and that's probably why she's so patient. Anyway, so that's her character. Being Athena, meaning it's a woman who is, tend to be, we can say, career-driven or goals-driven. She can be someone working in academia or corporate or government. It doesn't matter. Whatever her interest is, she's going to learn and she's going to excel in it. So she's a you know, go get her. She's uh, usually she make her decision rationally. She doesn't use her emotions based on her emotions to make decision. So she's usually a high achiever. And as I said before, she's very patient. And one of it, one reason for it is because you can really see the big picture. Um, and she's someone that it's going to be a really great ally to have. So if you have Athena strongly as an archetype. Um, influence in you, then you will definitely see yourself as someone who can be very focused. If you have a goal, say you need to really study well to do well at school, or you want to really succeed in a career, you someone can really focus on that. And that's what Athena is. So I'm not going to go in too much detail in this very short video, but I wanted to say, if someone say you're like an Athena, that's what they that usually refer to you as someone who can be very driven and focused. One other thing to be mindful of, in which I will talk more in, in my book, in my courses, it's about, so you're great, you will do so well in the city, you will thrive in any organization, but the problem is, you base a lot of decision on your, in your mind, in terms of your thinking, 
sometimes you may not use your heart to to um to make decisions and as we grow older and more mature sometimes that's the biggest problem that we're so disconnected from our heart and we're so focused in our head you know that saying about just spending so much time in your head or you're overthinking things that tend to be a tendency for Athena so that's a that's something that's for Athena to be mindful of so the next goddess we're going to talk about is Artemis um, many women I met um, a beautiful Artemis, which usually um, they love the nature because she's the goddess of hunt and moon. As an archetype, she's an activist and protector, especially with um, animals, the nature. So the lots of environmentalists tend to be um, tend to be Artemis. So when I say tend to be Artemis, I'm, what I meant is that she tend to have that goddess archetype active. In her, so the influence of such archetype is strong. So, you will see her uh, close connection with nature. She loved to be outdoor, and as a protector, often she felt a strong call to say helping women, helping the weak, children, elderly people who couldn't de defend themselves. She have a very strong inclination to be a protector, as well as being an activist. She also is a goal getter, but quite differently than um, Athena. And again, she's she can focus if she finds something that she's very passionate about. Um, you see a lot of women who maybe even taking up big um, strong position in government, in politics, or even business. They can be a hybrid between an Athena and Artemis. So that takes a little bit more explaining, and I actually shouldn't get into too much details right now. But what I want to say is, Artemis is usually that side of the women who. Who really have a strong calling for justice, for fairness, to to do good for the world, and that's really definitely a big part of Artemis. As for Athena, that will be someone who's really good navigating the world the institutions, so that she can actually get into position, be able to do something about your cause. So, if a woman having both archetypes together, they work so well, and usually they can be very influential in whatever they put their minds into. So. Again, she's someone who thrives in nature, outdoor. She's the opposite of Athena in that sense. So um, you know, you it, that probably is the sort of the defining line between say you're a hybrid and which one is stronger in you. And you will know if you're someone who could not live without the nature, then you tend to be、um, an Artemis. But the other thing that I have to mention is that these influences change as you. Grow older when you grow more mature, and when things happen in your life, you, you know, certain archetypes may be activated,、um, as well as certain archetypes when you're growing up may be actually being suppressed. If you grow up from a family who is really strong on, you know, studying and behave in a certain way, you may not be allowed to fully express your tendency as an Artemis to run around in in the forest. Or like myself, my growing up in Hong Kong. I don't have the opportunity to really to be a true Artemis. I cannot run around in the woods because there are just no woods.、Um, so what I'm trying to say is that some of these tendencies may not be fully developed until you get a chance, or when you allow yourself to be. So there's also social conditioning being placed in that. But you know, when we talk about these topics, you would know if that is something ring true within you because you remember when you were a child. Maybe that's something you're really craving for. So. Another key characteristics about Artemis is that, especially when they become older and more mature, the goddess of moon really kicks in, where you have a strong connection with the moon energy,、um, and you become more intuitive as well. There is something just making you closer to、um, your inner self. You know, listening to what the inner voice is so is telling you. There is more the going within really will start to kick in、um, when a、uh, When an Artemis is no longer running around in the nature, I mean, I don't take it literally. I mean, it really talk about the spirit of a woman more than literally how many hours you've been outdoor all the time. But you get it, you know, that's the spirit that I'm talking about: being loving the nature and the animals,、um, and also very, very、um, protective towards the environment, people, the weak.、Um, But what to be mindful for? And when I go into deeper in this body of work, I always talk about the strength of each of these archetypes. Because if you see this as something strong in you, 
you know, leverage it as in, you know, if you're an Athena, then knowing that you can see the big picture, trust yourself, use your strengths, and then be mindful about the other things that sometimes may have a tendency that weakens you or that's something you'd be mindful for. So, for example, in an Artemis, she can be very competitive and maybe even considering stubborn and uncompromising because she's so passionate about her cause. So that's something to be mindful for. It's not good, bad, right, and wrong. That is something that we can, you know, be um, pay attention so that we understand ourselves better as well as the way how we relate to others. This is all. This is all about. It's about your relationship with yourself and others. So next we come to Demeter, which is the goddess of grain and harvest. Um, her archetype is basically the mother and the nurturer. She's the mother of Persephone, which is a very, very well-known myth about a mother and daughter bond. Or in this story, in this myth, which I think I've gone into a、um, bit of detail in my ebook, and definitely more in detail, many layers in my、um, in my book, Goddess with Many Faces, coming out.、Um, actually, by the time you read this, maybe it's already out. So anyway, if you want to read the detail of the myth, definitely、um, the book will have it. But through this myth, we can really see the bond between mother and daughter, as well as how these two archetypes play out. So she's the mother of Persephone. Let's just keep it this way at first. She、um, definitely is someone who who is very loving, very nurturing.、Um, she actually, as a career, she may not be just like a stay-at-home mom. In、many cases, the、um, the amateur I know are nurses, the teachers, people who just love to give to others. So that's the characteristic of a amateur. She have also very strong maternal instinct. She love to look after people, take care of somebody. Um, you see them at work. You know, you can identify them so well because they were the nicest people around. Really, <laughs> um, you can always spot them in your office. Now for the amateur. Um, oh, another thing is that you know when at work, those that who love to bake or cook or provide, are、uh, tend to be a diameter as well, and they're not restricted to a mother figure because, you know, some some of the diameter that I met, they they don't have any children, but they may work with children. Maybe they just love to nurture and provide for others. So it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be a mother to become a diameter. And on the other hand, when you become a mother, then you would have that tendency more as well, because your archetype, your archetypal influence changes as you grow. Like for myself,、um, when I first started this body of work, I have created a quiz,、um, like a self-assessment, so give yourself a picture and profile, in which you are invited to do that yourself as well. So when I was doing that quiz, I had very low score on diameter, <laughs> and that I started this body of work before I have my baby. And now I'm a mother, and she's still a young little baby toddler. And I've done the test again, like, but my diameter score has increased, but still on lower compared to other archetypes. So they do shift, they do change.、Um, but I use myself as a guinea pig, and I realize that has shifted, but not as much in diameter, but more in the other archetypes. That okay? Go back to track. Be mindful of two things, actually three things: burnout, lack of self care, and codependency. So, it's probably no brainer if someone that is always providing for others, then there's a tendency that you may overwork,、um, and you may put yourself last, and so forth. And you may also develop a tendency to have codependency with somebody who always like you to look after them. So. Many wives, many mothers see this, so、um, that's a very common archetype in a way. So next, we have Persephone, her daughter. So very interesting myth. We don't have time to go into details today, but she's a maiden goddess and queen of the underworld. So she will become the queen of the underworld. Underworld in this in this body of work means really your unconscious, your subconscious. So she, her archetype is the mystic because she's very intuitive.、Um, she's someone who can really navigate、um, in someone's emotions. Um, and she's also eternally youthful. And one of the characteristics about all the Persephone I've met is that they're not just young at heart. There's something about their appearance that has a youthful feeling. Even though I have met Persephone in the '60s, so definitely they're not like young maiden. 
but there is something about them. It's almost resemblance of a child, a young girl. Maybe the smile, maybe the sparkle in the eye. So the wrinkle doesn't hurt, doesn't take away that spark. So they're always about something. Eternally youthful, beautiful. They're usually quite feminine looking in terms of dressing wise. So they like to maybe wear something softer in colors, or actually they can be very colorful. But what I meant is that they tend to dress more femininely, if if that's the right way to say. <laughs> and they're definitely very intuitive, and there's an eternal innocence about them. They're beautiful people. What to be mindful of as Persephone? Part of her character is that she's. Quite easygoing, as in she has her own mind, but she may not、um, push them too much. She's definitely not aggressive or even assertive person. So often they have an idea about what they like and don't like, but they may not like you know make them really clear, or they may not push their own agenda. You know, compared to Athena, Athena will be running the show, right? But Persephone will have her own thinking. Most most of them.、Um, But they may not push their own ideas forward so much. So they may also come across as quite indecisive, and sometimes they just don't want to confront. They don't want to cause trouble. They may appear to be quite compliant as well. But you know, this is the thing for a mature、um, Persephone. She actually know herself, and then she will have her opinion, and she want to make her own decision as well. But when she's younger, or before she really find her voice or her strength, she may come across as someone that you can decide for her. But it will change,、um, especially if something dramatic happened in a Persephone's life to dramatically sort of speed this up.、Um, and it happens in many of them, and they tend to be very、um, intuitive, so they can really get close to the emotion as well as other people. So they can, they work it can be very good. Um, as a therapist, counselor,、uh, people who working、um, in helping people. Then we go into the queen. So we have Hera. Hera is the goddess of marriage and queen of Olympus. She's the wife of Zeus, first wife. And I love that myths how Zeus, um, Zeus, um, pursued her and and what happened after they got married and. And it's a very interesting archetype because this archetype changes through time. Because you know the the role of a wife or the importance of being married now, as we recorded two thousand eighteen versus nineteen sixty, will be very different. So this is the archetype itself is also is evolving, but something does not change. For instance, she's always very loyal. She's queenly. There's a certain Aura about her, she's very regal. She's often someone that who is very confident and very conscious, and she looks beautiful. She's always well put together, and you know she's that great woman standing behind a great man. Often,、um, I think in a lot of myths you may read that about Hera that she has a bad temper. She may be jealous because Zeus is, you know,、um, cheating on her and betraying her. You know, those are the myths that we see, but I find. Sometimes she got a bad rap in a time where, yes,、yeah, she was she was angry, but rightly so when she believed so much in marriage and trust and loyalty. When you were betrayed, obviously you you get upset and angry. And also difference about this particular archetype is that I really think it's so interesting with these modern days because now. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to choose to be a wife or a career woman because you can be both. You can still stand in your own right. You can, you can, you know, really fully empower yourself. You have more choices,、um, and I think that's a really interesting archetype. We go a lot more details into this because it's really evolving. It's a continuous conversation about this archetype, and I think she had some bad rap from the past, from the myths, and that's changing too. So I love this archetype, and. One thing to be mindful of as a hero is, of course, you want to stand your own right. You don't want to be just a great woman behind a great man because you are just a great woman. Full stop. <laughs> so there's a lot of you know really looking into your personal、uh, individual development and who you are, what you're really interested, what is your purpose, what you want to do with your life more than you know how you may serve your husband. So really interesting changing dialogue about this archetype. 
And last but not least, we're going to talk about Aphrodite. Many people know about this goddess in the myths and the images. It's one of the most probably well-known、uh, goddess、um, in Roman. She's the Venus, and in Greek, she's Aphrodite. She's the goddess of beauty and love. You know, my goddess card image here is quite different than some of the interpretation, but I love her with red hair. <laughs> I hope you like it too.、Um, as an archetype, she's an alchemist and transformer. One of the reason why she's an alchemist、um, is because she see the deep potential in people, and that's why she's so magnetic. Because she can see the goodness, she can see the beauty, she can see the talent in you. So when she's engaged in a conversation or a friendship with you, you feel so good in her gaze because she really sees you. She's very present. She listens and she connects, and that makes her so magnetic, attractive. Um, and she make great creative because she can really immerse herself into、um, a creative project, and、um, she's also a great. She can be a very good therapist because she has the ability to really help you to transform. Because she hears, she sees you, she go in it, go into it, and she actually will transform herself as well. It's almost like she's constantly reinventing and learning and growing with you, and that's why make her so irresistible in a way. And compared to Athena and Artemis, for instance, I said at the beginning that they're very focused. And in Aphrodite, she's also focused, but relationship focused. As in, it means a lot for her to、um, to say she's a remote, remote romantic relationship. She's involved. She's really involved. She's she really put herself, throw herself at it, hundred percent. And let's say she's in a creative project with you. She's that relationship to her really is important. At that time, and also she will put all her effort into that project because of her relationship with the project as well as with you. So she's dedicated.、Um, she's all in. And problem with her can be that there's issue with boundaries because you know when she so immerses herself into, it, sometimes people may see it as a mixed signal. They may think they will engage in a romantic relationship. They like. They may think you. She liked you that way, but it may not be the case. And even if you're romantically involved, the the thing is that when she's in that moment, she's so in love, but she can also fall out of love, and and that happens with Aphrodite. And then she may move on, and maybe you're not ready to move on. So there's a lot of it can be tricky there, and、uh, she needs to learn about responsibility in terms of how to handle relationship in a mature, responsible way, and also clarity because sometimes people. May get confused when you seem to be so into them, but it's it's not necessarily romantic. And anyway, it's a very interesting archetype once again. And because the way she is, that she can really help you to transform yourself. She helps you to transform. She doesn't like you know magic wand you, <laughs>、um, but together you may both transform as well. So it's a very magnetic, very transformative archetype. That's why she's the last one because she's complex.、Um, But it's、uh, amazing to have Aphrodite energy in your life.、Um, many artists are also Aphrodite because of that particular、um, transformative energy. So that's a very quick run through of the six archetypes, and I'm sure you'll pick up one or two that you think, "Well, that sounds like me," and or maybe when I was younger, or "Oh, that's who I want to be." So, and that's very interesting. Do take note about that because, as I said before, you may born as an Athena, but、um, maybe your family were、um, was such a way that you couldn't fully develop your tendencies. So, you may not be allowed to go to school to study the colleges that you want to. So, you may forced to work、um, to support a family. There's many reasons why sometimes we cannot fully develop our natural archetype. And then when we grow older, when we have more freedom or capabilities, that we realize something was missing. And when I was a child, I was like this and this and that, but I suppressed it. That's the time when we say, "Ha,、huh, maybe there's something for me to look at." And this is the time. Also, when you move to the next stage in your life, like myself, as I said, when I become a mother, things change too. So different experiences. For example, also for Persephone. She was always eternal maiden, so innocent. And how did she become the queen of underworld? Something happened. You have a transformative experience. 
So we keep changing and evolving, and that's inevitable. So to navigate that, you know, we may need some time for ourselves, some self reflection, and I call that t- part of our life. In fact, we go through them at least a few times in our life. If you're a woman like myself, you go through puberty, you are become a woman, and you may become a mother, or as you reach an older stage, you may be menopausal. Our body changes, our hormonal changes all kick in, and inevitably we have to transform physically, emotionally, spiritually, all that. So a woman is definitely inevitable, and everybody will step on this journey. Question is, are you aware of it or not? So when we begin our hero or heroine journey, it's really about we moving forward to another stage in life. When you ask the question, who am I? Where am I? You know, who are? What do I want more now? What do I want less? What is missing in my life? How am I feeling? Those are usually、um, the question that would come up during this time. As well as you may receive a call, you know, in the call, and they say, you know, I have done enough for my career. I really want to do something more for for the world, for the children, for the poor. I don't know what calls you, but we go on a journey. Whether we want to or not, sometimes we we hear calling. We want to do something. Let's say someone worked very hard the whole life, and now it's time to retire. But when they want to create a hum- woman shelter or start a charity or、um, social enterprise, whatever the calling is, you may get in the journey that way, and that's transformative itself because it's all going to the unknown. But you're willing, and sometimes we get called to go on a journey when. We didn't want to. There was a reluctance, like let's say you don't want to be, you know, a woman yet. You still enjoy to be a girl or, or being a mother. That probably is voluntary. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is, we will be on this journey one way or the other.、Um, the question is how we're going to navigate and to make the best out of it, to make our journey really count. So, I also like to touch on the concept about women's cycle of life, where. You know that four season, and、um, as you can see, I put a little image here that I think it really demonstrates the four seasons: spring, summer, autumn, and winter. And for me,、um, many books talk about women or triple goddesses, as in、um, maiden, mother, crone. And I don't like it, as in I think the image in my head is too much of an old woman and bitter and cold. I don't know. For me, when you get to that stage, you become a wise woman. You You're obviously not the same as a maiden, or、uh, you know, like in the summer, like a mature, ripened woman.、Um, things definitely change, but I think when when we step into the age of wisdom, we become wiser. We have more to teach the others. We have more to share. I want to call them wise women, not a crone. And another thing I notice is that now, let's say the fifty is a new thirty or forty, sixty is a new forty. You know, women have more energy and opportunities. And I don't see the women only have three stages. I see four because I see a lot of women、uh, when they reach the menopausal era, which I call the golden years.、Um, it's autumn.、Um, the color matches. And I think often they become, say, the CEO of a, con- a company, or they may run their own business. They may create something new, and even if not none of those things, they may become like someone that is going to be the leader of the family, or she's going to be someone who know things because she she have gone through different life experiences. She's no longer a young girl, not even a young woman. She's a bit older, but. She still have lots of energy, so they we should not box them into the crown era. So I want a four season for us. So that's what I've created. And once again, in my programs, in my book, I talk a lot more about that. But I I hope that makes sense because these season, these stages also help us to think about our hero and journey because we inevitably go into one, changing from a young girl to a woman, or when we get married, or when we have babies, and or when we. Get really serious with our career, or when we become a manager, or when we have more responsibility, we change inevitably through life. So, and I think that the wheels of our life、um, sort of throw us into a transformative journey. I mean, you're gonna grow regardless. 
So one way is that you look at it consciously and you, you learn through joy and there may be pain and tears, but you also learn, learn through it, become more conscious and appreciative and grateful towards whatever you can see a silver lining in your journey and appreciate whatever that's thrown into your life. Um, or you can just go through it without being conscious, being without thinking that I'm on this journey. So maybe that's why sometimes it's challenging because we're in a belly of the whale. It's part of the human journey where you don't know how you can get out of this sort of tough period, the dark, dark nights of the soul. But if you understand it's a journey, you know you're going to get move up and move on. And... You know, this is a very short video, but I'm already, I think, running quite long. But what I want to say is that we go through this journey that, you know, we may need some tools or help or things that can help us through. And I hope this understanding archetypes, understanding some of the wisdom from the myths will help you to, to see your situation and see your relationships differently. So that may help you. We already touched on how to grow beyond, to look at your life continuously as the transformative journey. You may ask this question. I guess I was a bit ahead of myself. <laughs> um, but regardless, when you come through on a journey, you will ask these things like what truly matters? What is my deepest desire? What's my life purpose? And you know, if you're watching this video, reading my ebook, the chances that you want to know you are looking at your life in a deep and meaningful way. And I hope this body of work will help you. So Read the ebook, do the self assessment, watch whatever videos I put on. I hope that will give you some insights or ideas. But you're also welcome to come to my website to look at more information. I have a lot more free resources, blogs, and videos, and all that stuff. I also got book coming up and um, courses as well. And obviously, I'm also a coach. So, whatever way that you think um, I may help you, please contact me. But regardless, I hope you enjoy this very short introduction. I think it's not very short anymore, but I hope that gives you some ideas about goddess archetypes, how by knowing these archetypes may help you understand yourself and your relationships and helping you perhaps make decisions based on understanding who you are, where you are, what you really want in life, or what really matters to your heart. So I hope this is something that you will find useful and I really enjoy doing this for you and thank you for watching or listening. So thank you and I hope to see you soon.